Hey Lemon Astronomers, buying a dedicated astronomy camera is one of the most exciting things you can do other than buying the telescope itself. And after saving for quite some time, I've finally made that purchase. I've bought an ASI 533mm Pro by ZWO. I bought it a couple of months ago, but as with buying any astronomy gear, you just have to have bad weather for a few months or weeks just straight. I mean, it's just the nature of the game we're playing. So in process of doing a full review for this camera, but I just had to stop because I just processed this image and this image is from last night of observing session I've done and it's only one of the few nights I've been able to do it. But processing this photo has just absolutely blown my mind. Even though I'm in the process of doing a full review, I think it's a great opportunity for me to stop here, appreciate this picture, how good it is, go through some specs and give you my initial thoughts about this camera. Okay, so starting with the camera sensor itself it's got the one inch square sensor which i totally love by the way and this comes in at a respectable resolution of 3008 into 3008 pixels and here comes the impressive bit okay so it's a cooled camera it's got two stage tech or tec cooling however you call it to drop down the sensor temperatures by 35 degrees of the ambient temperature so if it's 20 degrees outside it'll be going to minus 15. It's got an extremely low read noise and on top of that it has zero amp glow which essentially means even at the longer exposures there's no weird artifacts which comes with it. The quantum efficiency is 91 at its peak with a full well capacity of 50,000 electrons so no star saturation problems. It's got an ADC of 14 bit which is very good to give you high dynamic range pictures. It's got USB 3.0 for fast transfers. It's got a fast RAM. Okay, now that's packed with a lot of good stuff. But now the question comes, why does ZWO pitches it like an entry-level camera? So to answer that, let's compare it with their latest and greatest 6200mm Pro. If you look at this comparison, it really goes head-to-head -head in terms of technology and the benefit we're getting from this. And the only place it lacks is, is the pixels. It's not a full-frame sensor. Now, having a full frame sensor is not necessarily a good thing always because then you're limited with your telescope's optical view. Because until unless you're using an apochromatic um, telescope or you're using a true astrograph, which are extremely expensive again, uh, you will bound to have some sort of vignetting and the star shapes will be weird. And you can easily boost up your pixels for your 533mm Pro by using mosaics. And if you use ASI Air Plus, you can do that with such a great ease. And this is where I show you my picture from last evening. Can we have some music, please? Now mind you, there's no dark pics, there's no flats, there's no biases, and there's no stacking done. It's just a single 60 second light exposure, which is taken 24 times in the same region of the sky, stitched together as a mosaic. And that's the result. If that's not blown your mind away, I don't know what will. I'll see you in the full detailed review of this camera. Peace.